Oh, there you go. Push up. Yeah, got it. Boom! That was way harder than it needed to be. Coils got crazy spark. Go ahead again, Chris. Okay. Okay guys, historic day right here at Wheels Through Time. Today, the 1932 Klobes Special is gonna fire up and run for the first time in I think about 18 years. Now, incredible story on this car. It's a completely one of a kind. So far, uh, Jake and Chris have been, you know, where are we into this thing? A couple hours so far, climbing underneath the car. There's been some issues that have kept us from running this uh, for some time. Now, the vehicle itself is such a rare and historic car. We're like minutes away from getting this thing running for the first time. A uh, little history about this machine. Uh, kind of regarded as the first street rod ever built. So as you can see, the thing's got the look and the feel of even what hot rodders are doing today. This has been a look that's been really popular since maybe the 1950s. So uh, the Klobe Special, nothing like it in the entire world. Uh, and it was built uh, by one man, one of a kind car, the only one ever made. So fellow's name was Cletus Klobes. He was from Mount Pulaski, Illinois, and he started with a Model B Ford chassis. This is a 1932 Ford uh, initially, uh, and Klobes made it his own car. So come and check some of the neat stuff out about this. Now, uh, some great old magazines are uh, magazine articles about this machine. Uh, I think this is like Rod and Customs from the, like, uh, the early 2000s. This here uh, is some of the history revolving around the car. So there's old Cleet when my dad purchased the car. It was a really neat story about that. I'll get to in just a minute. But this is the original title to this car. Uh, and uh, uh or or i should say maybe the second title to this car i'm not 100 percent sure dated april 23rd 1934 and you can see name of the car clobe special it's a coupe year built in 1932 cletus clobes from decatur illinois so mount pulaski was where he lived later in his life so cleat owned and built this car uh, in the 30s, was a member of a big band, uh, I think it was a Tiny Hill Band, and actually used this car, come check it out, to haul his drums around. So inside of the car, you've got this beautiful interior tuck and roll on the front two seats, no back seats. So this is actually where he'd stuff his drums. So he'd fold the seat down, actually the second seat folds down and folds all the way up. You can stuff all of the, uh, your equipment back there car was equipped with a trailer hitch, towed the band stuff all over. Now, the car itself, you can see this is not anything close to a standard Ford. Uh, the, chop, the top's been chopped, the hood's been split, uh, drop the axles, zed the frame, uh, custom grill up here that is an amazing piece of work. It's got that really cool slant to it, attitude like none other. You've got your scoop down underneath here to pick up wind for the radiator. Uh, one incredible car. The underside of this car uh, is as beautiful as the top. Uh, we think this car is probably painted, in the la painted last in maybe the 1940s. Um, maybe the 1950s so neat story on how the car came to us my dad got a phone call this is back when we were in southern illinois and got a phone call about an old street rod in a basement and uh, decatur illinois maybe four or five hours from mount vernon uh, he made his way up to decatur uh, met mr Klobes and his daughter uh, and ended up purchasing the car uh, uh, from cleat had to get it out of the basement car didn't run uh, loaded on a flatbed trailer and immediately went and got to work when he got it back to the museum in Illinois. Uh, jumped right in, uh, spent a lot of time finessing the car and getting it going again. Actually brought it up to the 4th of July parade in Mount Pulaski uh, to give Mr. Klobes a ride again. So, so far guys, we've done a ton on the car. Check this out. This is inside. This is neat. So, Jake put it great. He said, typical hot rodder. They're full of BS supercharged emblems these are actually from a from an auburn yeah yeah J jake says these are from an auburn um not supercharged at all 
standard model B four cylinder engine. Uh, so this has got the bolt on bell housing, but it's essentially a model A motor. Um, nothing special or high performance. I mean, I can only imagine this guy's goal was to get to the next gig, uh, impress a few people with the looks along the way. Uh, so standard four cylinder model B engine. When we walked up to the car, it was actually stuck. So the motor was actually stuck. Uh, put a new battery in it, went to hit the starter and nothing. And uh, last time this car was running, it was running just fine back in 19, or excuse me, 2004. Uh, so ran good when parked, probably something simple. I assume that the rings were stuck. So what we did was we popped this thing in third gear and rocked it back and forth and uh, got the engine moving a little bit. We were looking at the belt pulleys when we did it. And when we saw that front belt pulley moving just a little, pull the plugs out, croil, 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 bump it some more, bump it some more, bump it some more. Finally got it freed up. Uh, at that point, we go on and we start pulling spark plugs or pull all the spark plugs out, uh, hose down all the cylinders, like I said, uh, check and make sure all the valves are coming up and down, uh, making sure you've got compression. Pretty easy thumb test. We're not using compression gauges. Uh, wouldn't do us much good anyway. The, uh, the thumbs are good enough to tell us what we're trying to get today. Um, probably a little bit less compression on a few of the cylinders than the other ones. But uh, yeah, so thumb test, valves are moving up and down, compression on number four, number three, number two, number one had a stuck valve. So we spun it over a bunch. Valve comes up, dink it down. Valve comes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And finally it started opening and closing on its own. So um, spark, all four cylinders. Uh, we got spark on all the plugs. Um, so we've got the battery in, tied down. Uh, the big problem with this car, guys, uh, is that the gas tank was plugged. And this is one of the things that kept my dad from using the car as it should be used. He had a, over here, guys, I think this is really neat, suicide doors on this car. Um, just way ahead of its time as far as a look and a feel. You don't really see this going on until post-World War II. Uh, like I said, commonly regarded as one of, if not the world's first street rod. If any of you Model A guys or, or 32 Ford guys know of something earlier than this, let us know in the comments. But uh, incredible piece of work. Like I said, chop top, half a soft top there, um, killer little five window setup. So uh, made his own cowl. Um, the car is just so well built and it's tough as nails as far as the look goes. So um, the gas tank stuck, okay, or the gas tank was plugged. So we ended up dropping the gas tank out of this thing and never had the tank out, my dad did. So he always ran a five gallon gas can right up there in the front seat and siphoned it through the firewall here to the fuel line, uh, right to the fuel pump. So looks like an old style Tillotson carburetor. Uh, that thing ought to be just fine. So what we've done, uh, or what we're planning to do is uh, make a, a setup to run this 3 8 line here that Chris just ran into uh, the mechanical fuel pump. Uh, fuel pump's already lined to the, the carburetor, so I don't think it's gonna take much after we get this gas tank bolted back in uh, to get it fired up and running. So guys, stay with us. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna see this thing run for the first time, hopefully, in about 18 or 20 years. So hang with us. Here we are. Straighten it out. All right, that's great. Cool. Okay, guys, so here we are. This is the tank out of the Clobe special. Um, had some work to do. The fuel line or the fuel outlet was actually plugged. So uh, we went and fished a wire way in through there. There's a line that comes way over to the side here and sips it off the bottom of the tank. So that's all cleaned up. Um, Chris installed an inline fuel filter underneath the car. Uh, have the top plug here because there was some issues with that. I think this thing ought to slip right underneath. It was a tight fit coming out. So, okay, here we go. Let's see if we can fish this guy back up. Sunglasses. 
Don't let me forget where they're at, because I will lose those guys. Okay, so where are the two points that we're looking for? Okay, um, Chris, I see, I see the two holes. See, you can never see those when the tank was in, Chris. Um, wow, that is not gonna be an easy fit. Chris, you're gonna have to help me. Uh, yeah. Get it all in there. Okay. Let me find the angle. Okay. Um, we're really close already, man. Hold on. Okay, you, you were you were real close right there. I could see the boat. Okay, hold on. You're you're just behind the hole towards the rear of the car. Okay. I'm trying to even it out though, because something's hold keeping me from. Sure, let me look in this other hole. It's the fill see. neck. Oh, so I gotta fish the fill neck in, right? Yeah. Where is that going, Jake? It's gotta go forward. You gotta go forward. Okay. I see. This side's gotta come. This side's gotta go up first. There you go. There it is. Okay, now Chris, can you tell where I'm at? Yeah, I can see down there. I haven't seen the. Okay, I see now. Yep. Okay, yeah, right there. You got that one side. You got fish. one. Yep. There, okay, hold that right there. Let me put it bold on it. <laughs> 30 something, 40 years he owned this car. I can tell you why he never did that. Because that was not fun. Yep. Okay, hold on. I'll get that side. Woo. Oh man, we're so close. Okay, now let's go to the other side. You're just hanging it, right? Yeah, just hanging it. Okay, good stuff. Let me get to the other side. Okay. Now the exhaust pipe's in the way here. It's probably gonna be harder for me to see. Um, but I can see. A little bit more. Oh, get back there. Oh, there you go. Push out. Yeah, got it. Boom. That was way harder than it needed to be. Oh man, oh my God. Weren't you saying we needed a car guy to come do this for us? Yeah. This morning? <laughs> That's right, we need a car guy. <laughs> That's why we don't work on cars, man, is there's too many parts. They're all twice as big. This ain't like bolting a set of gas tanks on a knucklehead, that's for sure. Yeah, that's tight, for sure. All right, let's get out of here. Oh, man. Wow. Let's go ahead and bring this back up again. All the plugs are set. Let's go ahead and put some fuel in it and we'll bleed that fuel line. It's not the easiest. I don't like it. You think it'll make it before you're pouring the... Uh, are you in? Not yet. Now we're in. Yep. Go for it. He didn't make it easy to get to, so spare tire back in here and he's got the actual filler neck way behind there. I don't know how he ever filled this thing in the first place. Um, and a little trap door here. Um, if, I think we're in, Chris. You can just lift that sucker up and go with it. And let me see if I can. Got the drips down low. We're dry so far. I'm gonna go ahead and try and get some fuel to the line here go ahead chris and take a rag and the compressor and blow into that cap a little bit and try and put some pressure on that line and and get us there um oh yeah oh yeah good um oh yeah so I think now we can about we can try and fire it up. Chris, I'm gonna need you over here on the choke. All right, guys, moment of truth. 1932 Clobe Special. Chris, go ahead and uh, I got it. 
Give it some choke. Well, first off, what's it doing when I pull the choke? Is it closing all yep. the way? Uh -huh. It closed all the way? Yep. Does it come off? Yeah, it comes off. Wow, so the choke's gonna work. Let's see if it pulls gas on its own. You getting any fuel yet? Don't see anything yet. Open your choke up. Yep. Anything? Get, it didn't, no, it didn't open back. That go time. ahead. And, oh, it didn't open back up on that time. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. Yep. No, it go ahead. Out. Put your hand on it and see okay. if you can create some real suction. Okay. Ready? Yep. It's sucking, but I'm not getting any no fuel. Yet. Let's get some of that starter fluid and run it on that. All right. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Oh man, we're close. Let me see here. What do we got for delivery? Is it even coming? Is there any? Let's, let's see right here's where it's dripping. Here. Is that just a nut? Yeah. So tighten, let's tighten that up. Is that, um, it's a nut and a copper washer. Yeah. Yeah, I got a little bit, but it wasn't much. Okay. Let me, uh, why don't you go, Chris, and do you know where the starter's at? Here, sit down there. It's in a different place than a, uh, there's uh it's that knob on the left and you you pull that okay. knob so give me a you're sec gonna do here. the throttle and everything I'll do the throttle and everything okay. so let me know when you're ready um go ahead yep keep on You guys got any answers? I think you know. You know what I would do is I would open that uh, primer cup and put some regular gasoline into it. If you got a little tube that you can syringe and squirt a little teeny bit in. Yeah. I think that you create the vacuum and sucks out of the carburetor. Once she, she gets once it's running, you once yeah once yeah, it's turned suck over. It right out. Go ahead again, Chris. Uh, hold on. Where what happened there? Yep. Ready? Let me get something real quick. So what we're going to do, genius stuff from Harley Davidson. These are for primer cups uh, on the left side of your Harley engine. So pull it up, it's a little syringe, and then you squirt it out uh, to fill the primer cup. So we're going to rob some gas out of this 16 Harley here and put it in the primer cup and see if it actually works. This would be a miracle if it does. Ready? Let's see if we can get her in there. Okay, close it back down. Okay, Chris. Ready? Um, I think so.
to do is tighten that generator. Um, idle's good. Yeah, sure. Hit that ignition. We're going to shut it off. Yeah, it's a pop-in switch, so you push it in like my Model A outside. Yep, there you go. All right, so Jake, make sure that radiator's topped off when we run it. Yep. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, how about some croil? That was our issue right there. Is impeller was stuck. What are we rubbing on there? See if that belt's spinning when we spin it over there. I bet that drag on the... Uh, yeah, the drag may well have been had something to do with it. All right. I love it. God, that thing sounds amazing. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. This is the fun part, man. Wow, fire's right up now. Amazing. Okay, here we go. Clutch. Let's hope it goes into gear. Ooh. How am I looking back there? Yeah, keep going. You're good. Keep it straight. Yeah, baby. Off we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Horn's working. Wow, what a ride, man. This thing is too much fun to drive. I remember riding this when I was a little kid. It's been absolutely forever. Take it down the road, man. See how she cruises. special running again custom car from the 1930s as cool as it gets if you ask me 
That's what all the street rod guys for the past 60 years have been going for this car. And uh, back under its own power again. I know Cletus, the original builder, is smiling down. I know my dad's smiling. Uh, it's been a long time. And uh, many more miles to come. Thanks for tuning in.